So the news here I wanted to quickly touch upon, which I wanted to just make a general overall point about, was this news courtesy of Billboard, which is as follows. Megan Thee Stallion launches mental health resource website for fans. Bad bitches have bad days too. Now, for me, right? The reason why this was hilarious and I thought I wanted to make a wider point about this was because if you know anything about what's been going on with Megan and obviously Tory Lanez and the fallout from the shooting, did it happen? Or obviously, did it happen? Who actually did it? Um, a lot of kind of like finger pointing and back and forths and subs and direct lyrics and whatever it may be, right? And it's been a whole an affair that's kind of gripped the internet, but not really because we're kind of all tired of it. We just want them to go court and just find out what exactly happened or what the you know, the closest version of the truth was and then let everyone go in their merry way. Now, my one issue from it from the first place has always been I hated the disparity in treatment. I hated the fact that it didn't feel fair that in general, in a story that no one really knows the definitive truth and unless you're in that car, that one person can basically have their career halted for a bit, not forever, but for a bit, and maybe in some places for a bit as well, especially if you consider the stuff that's happening with academics and, you know, Ebro and the stuff that he revealed that Ebro wouldn't want to put Tory Lanez on the playlist and stuff, which is essentially, quote unquote, hurting or killing his career. The thing I didn't like about it was that it felt like one person could continue thriving and essentially benefit from the kind of virality of that story from the sympathy people had for that person especially megan and the other person has their career basically on pause and gets painted as a villain even though we have no facts or what actually happened in that car right we don't know anything we're just kind of all speculating based on the bits of information that we that's out there and interpreting police reports and cameras but we don't actually know definitively what happened and maybe we'll never find out in the courtroom but we'll probably get closer to the truth than what we've seen so far on social media and Throughout the entire time they've been going back and forth, there's been many occasions where Megan Stalin has not shown any sort of um, compassion or understanding for anybody suffering with mental health, especially when you think about the man of subtweets that have happened with friends involved. Again, I only know it's because of channels I've watched on YouTube, but there's been subtweets from friends, there's been indirects from her that's been written. Um, there's even to this day, she basically flat out denies that she even had any sexual relationships or sexual relations with flipping Tory Lanes. Many, many different things. Like, I'm not, am I saying flipping, not admitting you have a body is a, is a form of mental mental abuse or is, is basically, maybe I am saying that, I don't know, but it, it, it doesn't matter. I just feel like that unfairness in the response or in the actions that followed that thing were just so unfair that it just, you know, it was kind of hard to watch in real time. But then I realized quite quickly when I was watching it and analyzing it and ranting about it, life isn't fair. Life is never fair. And then the overall point I wanted to make about this whole thing about making certain launching a mental health resource website despite her not really being the best example of somebody that treats mental health seriously it's only something that she i would think like some people do with most mental health issues where they basically um use it as a crux to excuse their poor behavior or use it to hide behind or use it to justify whatever thing that they want to do or use it for them to kind of avoid any criticism too oh, i've got mental health issues so no one can basically tell them about themselves or whatnot so it's all kind of full of crap which brings me into our last point this headline for me just proves that most people are full of shit most people are full of shit but i think with us general punters with us general customers with us civilians as comedians like to call us right especially the la ones what thing separates us between famous people or rich people or well-known people or people with clout is that we can't really get away with being full of shit we're going to get called out, whether it's our friends, whether it's society on the street day to day, whether it's people that we work with, whatever. Someone's going to definitely call us out on our shit. But if you're a celebrity or someone that's well known or an artist or an influencer or a politician, whatever it is, or something that people, you know, you have adoring fans and maybe some haters, whatever it may be the ratio, right? There's still, um, you still get told, you st you still don't get told about yourself. I said, yes, you still don't get told about yourself if you're a celebrity because you're trying yourself usually with yes men. People are going to feed your ego. People are going to satiate your need for more, 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 more. You don't really have people in there that are going to call out who your bluff. And if you do, you're going to put them on the outside and not really on the inner circle. So I think a lot of that kind of bears fruit in it. But it's just funny the things you can get away with when you're really 
well known or people kind of sympathize with you or people like you, wherever maybe you can get away with absolute murder. But I think as a regular civilian, you don't really, you know, you can't, to a certain point, you can't really get away with it. You have to have some think redeeming about yourself, something that kind of doesn't really speak to the sort of stuff that people can kind of rally behind. But I just thought it was hilarious seeing that headline on Billboard about the whole thing. But let's read a bit of the article here. She was fantastic in this picture, by the way, taking that way to 2022 Vanity Fair. She was really good there. And it goes, if Megan Thee Stallion can have bad days, anyone can. That's why the 27-year-old rapper revealed a website for her fans to full of mental health resources from therapy information to emergency hotlines. Fit entitled, the bad bitches have bad days too. It's like, okay, what about the bad bitches that you and your friends were bullying and subtweeting during the backlash of all this stuff, right? What happened to them? What was the best friend's name again? Um... Was it Kelsey, right? That was the one, right? What, what about her mental health when she was going through all that stuff? No one really cares about that. What about Tori's mental health? If it comes out that she lied about the entire thing, what about his mental health for the whole affair? She pointed a finger and basically said he was the one that shot her. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know. It's all sort of nonsense. But that's a pretty, I'm just looking at this, like this headline here at the bottom. That's a pretty deep lineup for an SNL, isn't it? Are they, are they going to be all in it together? SNL hosting Kendrick, SNL hosting Kendrick Lamar, Willow Smith. Oh, Kendra Manor Willow on musical guest lineup. Okay, cool. I'm, in, I'm into that. Megan Stallion to make SNL debut. I was like, okay, imagine Megan Stallion, Kendrick, Lamar, and Willow on SNL. That's pretty nice. It continues anyway. It says, um, Bad Bitches Have Bad Days 2 compiles four categories of resources free therapy organizations, mental health helplines, resources directories, and LGBT. QI plus community resources. Each category features a menu of useful links to external uh, mental health websites, many of which are resources. Uh, sorry, I focus on serving BIPOC and those in the LGBT plus QA community. Bounce back like bad bitches always do. Read a quote based on the site. Hotties reads um, what appears to be the message from the Plan B artist shared on Twitter by a fan. You know your, you know you how much mental health means to me. So I created the hub of resources that help you when you need to get a hand. Um, head to bad bitches love bad days too and now check it out love y'all so much everyone loves each other everyone has bad days um yeah i don't know i don't know i don't know so let, let's see let's see how that pops off but you know i just think in general you know when your actions when your when your words are match your actions you kind of have to get called out on some of this stuff but you know i think in general people don't care because they decide who they like and then they make the excuses for who they like and then they bury the ones that they don't and it just is what it is